do 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 rate and self do topical topic i love topical topics so today i'm going to talk a little bit about a controversial issue and right now i have a trigger warning um, especially if you're a part of or have any kind of care for the lgbtq plus community i would certainly um advise you that this is going to have a few offensive things in it so last week a british woman named suzanne moore published an article online she's a feminist and she's an activist she was writing an article about how um, women have this unobtainable body image. Basically, she's comparing that un unobtainable body image to the Brazilian transsexual body. There was this massive Twitter storm that developed. It started with people saying, hey, that's offensive. There are a lot of murders that are committed, um, hate crimes against trans women in particular in Brazil. A lot of people were offended by that comment. And then she and some of her supporters were having a lot of backlash, it was all very nasty, and then back and forth, and, it, and basically it was so bad that one of her friends, Julie Burchill, on Sunday published a retaliating article on The Guardian, which is a British online newspaper. It was titled, Transsexuals Should Cut It Out. The point of the article was that transsexuals are in no place to criticize the feminist movement of anything because they're so lowly on the totem pole that they have no power to criticize them. And then her ending line was, you won't like us when we're angry, basically saying, we're more powerful than you and we can crush you like little ants if you criticize what we're saying over here, even if it's at your expense, so shut up. That article was published on Sunday. The Guardian actually got so hundreds of responses saying, hey, take it down, that they actually did later that day remove the article. <laughs> Another backlash is from a lot of people saying it's disgusting that The Guardian would censor anything. Censorship is when you remove something from a certain area, whether it be a certain online newspaper like The Guardian or in a public library, a public school, basically severely limiting the access your typical person has to information, to commentary, what have you. And this can be a very negative thing because it can actually sweep problems under the rug and as the, um, the Guardian was initially saying, you know, we air issues out so that we can deal with them. A lot of advocates for censorship say this will protect the kids, um, kids won't understand, so a lot of issues in books that are typically censored um, especially for young people, are things like homosexuality and um, transgender is a lot of the time censored. Harry Potter is one of the biggest censored books in America because it has witchcraft. Film based upon a book that's coming out now, Perks of Being a Wallflower, big band book, uh, Huckleberry Finn, big band book. The reason that we still read a lot of these books in school is so that we can be become educated about issues that were in the past. Because whether you like it or not, history repeats itself. We see this all the time. And the only way to prevent these issues from returning is to be educated about what happened in the past and why that was horrible and why we don't want it to happen again. So it's about vigilance from generation to generation to make people continually aware of how horrible things can arise. And I can go cliche and talk about the Holocaust, but I think we all can get that just from the very mention of it. A young adult author that I really admire is Chris Crutcher, and he has this beautiful quote, um, and I actually looked for it online, I couldn't find it, so if you can find it, I love you. But he basically, paraphrasing, says that you've got to stand up for everything if you don't want your work to be censored, if you want these issues to be public and to be something that we can deal with and talk about in a forum, they need to be aired out. And in order for it to be reasonable for your work to not be censored and to be heard, you need to stand up even for the stuff that you don't like. So I think that's a really important commentary on censorship, that we have to stand up against censorship even when it's for something that we don't like like this horrible Birchill article. I was actually one of those people who complained to The Guardian, writing basically, you know, I'm not telling you to take this article down, I would actually prefer you keep it up. But what I want to see is a response from The Guardian, um, ideally saying, you know, we don't agree with this, this is actually a perfect example of transphobia, 
and we need to recognize this as a society and have commentary. So all of these comments down below the article that are saying, hey, I see this, I see how this can perpetuate a thought that these people, this group of people are lowly and they don't deserve to speak up. So when you censor something, you perpetuate ignorance of a problem. I think that what was actually really good about the Birchill article is that she's actually exposing how some groups and even some mindsets of people are subjugating fellow underprivileged groups, saying, hey, we've got our own big thing going on, shut up, let, our, let us do our thing, and maybe we'll deal with you later. But it's perpetuating this idea that civil rights are relative, and that only some groups get their turn, and then you've got to wait your turn kind of thing. But civil rights are something that we should all be fighting for all at the same time, otherwise we would become hypocrites in and of ourselves. For the same reason that we still read things like White Man's Burden and Jane Eyre in schools is because we still need to talk about these issues and let people come to their own horror, recognize and face ourselves as a society what can happen again if we don't still see it from generation to generation. And that way we can understand why people are so upset and want it to not be there in the first place. <laughs> okay, I can't memorize this part. This is something that I wrote. So, in short, I wish when people criticize someone for being controversial, intentionally or otherwise, that they would call for a full societal magnifying glass on why that happened, why those perceptions, why those perceptions are so prevalent, and focus on the problem that exists instead of calling for the article to be non-existent. Because when you do that, you're killing the words, but not the thoughts, and not the actions. Now, here's something to lighten the mood. I have something for you if you have a tattoo of a lover past, um, that little nice brad that's emblazoned up your arm, or that little Anne over your heart. Mm. Instead of getting it removed, now, it's an acronym. Let your imagination run wild. You can come through, I'll stop for a second. <laughs> Are you actually filming? Yeah. Can I wave at it? Yeah, you can. That'll make you feel good. Hi. Hi! This is Mike, you may have seen him in another video. Mm. Yay, those are his Bits. pajamas. Yeah, pants. You can edit that part I'll out. I'll edit that part out. So there's a new special video and vlog next week. Like and comment and subscribe. And say hi if you would like. Mike's gonna say hi again because he loves being in the limelight. DFTBA and enjoy yourself.